sore. This it just was, you know, it's hard to see. So that's why my eyes are all glazed over. I'm squinting all the time. So from here on out, I'm just going to have to go by the way of the big Lebowski. feathers and stuff on it and uh, I was like yeah I could do that but I need like some kind of photographic reference because if I did it off the top of my head if I'm an abstract I can do it but I want it to look like a cow skull so there you can like go online and search for cow skulls but you gotta be careful because a lot of it's uh, like trademarked or registered or license you know and you get in trouble by using those uh, images but there are sites up there that provide license free uh, images for reference for artists and it's searchable there's a lot of images on there it's and uh, one in particular is called pixabay um, pixabay.com you can uh, just go there and type in cow skull which I did, and uh, well, this is what came up. And uh, but anyways, so um, I saved that image, downloaded it, printed it out, and we're going to use that as a uh, template to trace on the image. But there are other ways to do it, like the grid. You know, you got the uh, like three lines and three lines. Do the same thing to the picture. So and then you can use the photograph as a guide and draw it out by hand um, or you could project it with a little projector and draw it that way a lot of ours do that that's perfectly fine or uh, you can uh, pre-draw it or trace it on uh, a piece of paper and transfer it up from there onto there or for middle tone excuse me maybe a yellow ochre I didn't have any but I had a golden sunset which looks like yellow ochre compared to yellow um, maybe then I ran across this Ooh, metallic royal gold that's the ticket that's, and this way you can um, pour it then use it immediately before it gets tacky all right and also got this other camera as a microphone so let's see if that helps I'm going to pick up some of this gold in fact let me show you yeah a little bit of this gold right here and let's put this as a middle tone just paint all this in nice and solid right here in fact with me looking away from the camera now my shades can come off Right. In fact, we might be using two middle tones or two coats, should I say. There we go. Make sure it's all covered. Just coloring it in. It it says the middle tone. It's just a flat tone. It's no shading yet. No. You know, we're just filling in forms. All we're doing, put in. Just putting paint on there. Oops. Okay, that might change. Probably needs to be lighter, of course. And then I'm going to go into our. Actually, this needs to go across this other bone here, too. Remember, it is a middle tone. It'll probably get a lot lighter. Going around like so. 
and a lot of times your brush strokes should be the same should be in the same direction as as your form if the forms round your brush stroke should be round as well all right got all that in there it's good let's see same thing here triangles You want to use a small round brush to get in around these shapes be my guess yeah this uh, flat brush seems to be working okay for me sometimes I just like depending on what it is I might go down to a smaller brush or a bigger brush or uh, there's a general rule in the art world is uh, use the largest brush for the particular job at hand, I'll be using lots of black. All right, and using the three-quarter inch brush, just load it up real good. All right, nice and solid. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start in this corner here. I'm actually going around the edge. You know, let me do this. Clean my brush. Let it sit. I'm gonna use a smaller brush, the half inch. Because before we do all that, we want to go ahead and uh, get around this edge like so. Once again, you can use any brush you want. To get that nice clean edge right here. Dun, 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 dun. See, I'm not a real big talker. Some people can paint and talk at the same time. I, I have a hard time doing that. Because usually I just listen to music and paint. You know, and I'm not playing any music now. Is I'm recording off this camera and see, see if it'll pick up my voice pretty good. Um, depending on the audio, I might just uh, dub over it like a third-person point of view type thing. We'll see how we'll see how it comes out. Um, you know, like uh, maybe down here, I'll start leaving some areas poking through here too here in fact I'm going around the edge this here I want to leave dark because the light's going to come from here down right and uh, I want it to be lighter on this side all right let's get back about, let's get back into it now um, yeah, we're going to come around the sides here yeah, this corner a little bit. If it hits this, don't worry about it because, because that's just the uh, underpainting. You know, it goes up. It's kind of keeping it dark on this side because that's where the highlight is going to be, right? So maybe this little haze up here. Or something like something like that so that way from, from dark to light yeah all right I'm gonna wash my brush and that's almost dry what we're going to do all right We got all that done, that's dry. And I really want to do the background first. I really do. Get that blue put in. And I feel I like working back to forward, okay? So I'm gonna get this ultramarine blue going. 
it's I mean, this dried almost. I mean, it's, it's, it's only been a couple minutes. That's one thing about acrylic, it dries fast. All right? Ooh, got some blue out of that. That's the end of it. That's the end of ultramarine blue. But, I got it too. A little thicker, but just as transparent. I'm going to just put a little bit of that next to it. Because I'll be using a lot of it. That's a, that's a good size area. So, you want a, a lot of that blue. Alright. And I'm also going to use matte medium. This is by uh, Daler and Rowney. I don't know. But this is uh, matte medium. It, just think of it as uh, like paint, acrylic paint, but clear. It's transparent. Comes out milky white looking, um, but it thins your paint and uh, does, and then it just dries clear if you know. But uh, put a little bit of that in just to give it a little bit extra translucency. Did I say it right? Translucency? I think I did. Alright. And I'm using good old three-quarter inch flat brush. Right? Alright. So here's the blue. We got the blue here and we got that matte medium. Alright. And I want to like pick it up. This is all dry. I'm going to pick up a good swab, mix them together. And let's start up here in the left corner, upper left corner, and just co cover all the background, the black. Uh, okay, here's the fun part though, you gotta get around this edge. You know, a lot of times what you can do is you can like turn the canvas, like so, right? Pick up some more of this blue. And it makes it easier to stay within a particular uh, line you know just instead of being instead of being all contorted you don't want to be all contorted turn you know you just turn the canvas to get the best angle so you can get that stroke in as clean as you can like right this is a lot easier than going across like that or something yeah and then just come around follow that edge come back down this way yeah there you go down this way. There we go. Let's just kind of scrub that in. We're loose. Alright. Yeah, I need a little bit more water. Just a little bit. I'm going to dab the excess water out. Alright. This here, I'm just going to. Hopefully, I got enough blue. Yeah, it might have ran out. Guys, welcome back. Okay, we have our painting here. We're in the overpainting stage. Got the background perfect. I mean, we did a black and white underpainting, and then we glazed it with ultramarine, ultra, ultramarine blue, which is uh, really transparent. So you can see that white showing up. That gives it a nice tone. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the overpainting of the skull. So right now the skull is in, it, in its middle painting state, which is like the middle tone. And what we're going to do is we're going to put shadow in it, or push it back with shadow, and pull it out with highlight. All right, so it's like we're grabbing the, the image and going, Arr! stretching it out, giving it some dimension. So it looks like it's actually coming up like so. It's actually in this eye right here. And then it comes in, then down, right? Using very little paint, it's kind of like a stain. You know what I mean? Uh, that goes here. Let me see. Pick up a little bit more. Define that a little bit better. Same thing here. Let's see. Uh, there you go. That makes that eye jump out a little bit more. Um, and then we have. Actually, with this forehead right here, we got like this big old split. We like go ahead, just put like a little faint line there. As shadow a here, right? The light's coming this way, so I'm gonna stick that shadow right, right along this edge, right? 
and then look out underneath here lights come around so this entire side something like that right underneath there there's a ridge right there ridge right there wherever there's a ridge wherever there's like a, a shape that curves around you just where it's tucked in the light won't reach but you put a little bit of shadow right there that help give it some dimension all right this is just the first step we're going to come back and make it a little darker in places um, shadow underneath here, all right? Shadow here, a little darker. And wet the brush. I'll pick up some black. All right, probably right in the middle. See, when you have like these little lines, put them in the center, but leave that like the outer edges that brown. Just right here in the middle. Just, just, you don't put too much, just a little, er, it gives a little extra. And this ochre, this yellow ochre, which actually was, uh, I'm going to use yellow as the highlight color. All right. Oh, I might put too much. <laughs> it didn't sound good. All right. So I'm pick up that yellow and uh, a little bit of that white. That white's mainly to uh, make it a little bit opaque because that yellow is super transparent and I'm not going to use a whole lot of it. All right. All right, so this horn area right here on top, I'm just put a little highlight here. Just kind of give a little, a little oomph, a little white. So I'm thinking about how the light's hitting it on this angle. I guess it'll hit this top area right here, right? That's the top. Same thing over here. That just make it just, just jump, right? Same thing here. The top edge, and follow it around. Is it, you know, it has a round curve. So you can follow it. Wherever you think the light's hitting it. All right, and of course this horn got light hitting it. Let's see what can I do with it. There it is. All right, right here. I'm going not going to that blue. I'm going around it. See, there's the highlight. Right here. Right. And right here. Right. Watch out for those little red things. So you just kind of scratch it. Let the faint, uh, the faint. Let the paint come off your brush, so it's very little. And you just kind of like scratch at it a little bit. It also gives it some texture, you know. Come around here. Yeah. So like that. Um. So I could use this. We were going to freehand it anyways, and so I was going to use this as a uh, as a guide, though. Something to look at, help study you know, your hand and give you direction and give you an idea of where it's going. Um, I'm going to use my trusty. This is my half inch flat brush. I'm going to start with a cord and a, and a picture here. You know, it's around this edge, right? So this we got what, like a line coming this way, and maybe another one crossing it over, then this long one coming down. Um, looks like about to where the uh, the eyebrow is. So it'll stop right right here. And then you got a couple beads, and then the feathers go all the way down, and it stops right before the tip of his uh, nose area. So those right here. I think I want the inside ones longer. Then it'll kind of give it like a triangular look instead of a blocky thing. I think it'll help. So these outside ones, I'm going to keep short. All right. Got like that. All right. All right. All right. Um, the way to do these feathers is I find where, where they start. Like this one right here. It's, uh, and it's got like a little tie-off, right? And so the feather actually starts 
with a kind of a couple little, little things right there, right? And then it goes the other way. Alright. It's another alright. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to stop that. It's interesting, this feather's kind of going this way, right? But we can give it like a little. You know, it has that spine right in the center. That's the center of the feather. And from here, we start pulling out, holding this brush at that same angle. Or, right? So this side will be going. All right. Something like that. Uh, canvas underneath. If you paint over dark, it when it dries, it dries darker. Kind of absorbs that bottom layer somehow. I don't know. But we're going to put another one here. But only on this one side. Because that's where the light's coming from, right? This way. And so we're just going to brighten that one side. The other side, we're going to leave that one coat. And it'll give it like a little kind of its own sparkle. A little bit of dimension. It'll help okay. out. And we'll just do this. One. So just kind of tap it. You're just, co just covering the white. Because this color is transparent and so you get all that detail in there this is what you call this glazing that's what we're doing old-style glazing that's what the old masters used to do I like that yellow one it's really shows good give it a little bit more green green it up maybe on the back side it'll darken it too let me see Yeah. If you want, actually, we can go back to that script liner. My other camera died. <laughs> Don't have a whole lot of memory in it. That's why you need to help me. I need better recording equipment. I need a better laptop. I have an i3. And, uh,. It takes forever to render stuff with that sucker, <laughs> but it works. Um, so yeah, subscribe to Patreon, and that would help out tremendously. And I can get better at this, get better equipment. My first goal is five hundred dollars a month to supplement my Social Security. Second goal is a thousand dollars a month, and that's when the the equipment happens. You know, uh, get. Upgrade my system, computer, cameras, uh, invest in some microphones for better sound. Um, but yeah, subscribe. And uh, I'll be putting these out once a month. And each one hopefully will be better than the last. Alright, pick up some white again. And some of that green. So we turn our super bright white green. All right, do the same thing here. Let's give it like a little boop, 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 boop. And we're going to brighten up this side. Give it a little, just keep the same angle. And, and it's kind of a dry brush thing. Use the very tip of the brush, don't press. And just let the paint drag off the, the bristles, All right? Like Bob used to say, you can't see the light without the dark. Right? There we go. Believe it or not, we're not done. We got some beads to paint. Right? And they could be different colors. So I'm going to paint. I'm going to do some white right here. I think there was a bead right here. Right? Make it white first. And there is a, actually two beads. We'll do a big bead and a little bead. And maybe a bead right here. It's a good size bead. That the feather's pressed against it. Just put it some more white again. If it's not coming off your brush, add a little bit of white so it'll flow better. And it had a second bead up here too. It was kind of something like that. Those bees. It's a good sized bead. 
And right here. Why are we doing white first? Oh, so the color would show. Is it, it, it's against that black background. And so this white is actually a mask. Think of it as a mask and out in the background. A little smiley on the Make them the same because they're reflecting the same light. And so I'm just going to put like a little sideward little hook on the right edge. Not right on the edge, but right in front of it. I need a need some more water. Mainly white. Okay, I'm going to give it a little sparkle. A little boop. One here. And there, a little sparkle. You just kind of touch it. It's like another little comma on the other side, but you just kind of just kind of do a little. Oh man, this one needs to be bigger. There you go, a little sparkle, sparkle. Yeah. By George, I think we've got it. In fact, we have already signed it previously, but. Uh, I think he'll like this. You know, my friend uh, Dwayne, he's he's a Lumbee Indian here in uh, Robson County, North Carolina. And um, he's just a good guy and everything. And I, I really think it's more like that. All right. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out my Patreon page. It's uh, patreon.com slash Crystal Presto. Man, that light's bright. Let me put these back on. Ah, oh, better. Well, we're all done. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, uh, check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Hurstel Presto. And uh, you go to my website. It's uh, hurstelpresto.jimdo, J-I-M-D-O, dot com. And uh, follow me on Facebook. And uh, you can contact me through my webpage or leave a message somewhere. But uh, you have a good one. Later, Gators.